So everybody loves a generator call. So let's go take a look over here at this generator and see what it's doing. We've got one here that uh, didn't want to start the other day. The lady's grandson came out and checked it, added some oil to it, said all the things were flashing, which it's hard to say exactly what it was was flashing. Got a remote control verifier there that's got no radio signal. And as you can see there, the air filter luckily has a metal mesh behind it because the mice came in and got in there, dug a, a little bit of that filter out. Look at the oil there. Oil seems to be perfectly on the money, so uh, they got that set right up. So let's see if our linkage here is okay. That's smashed down all the way. Like I said, I usually lift that up just a little bit so it doesn't actually touch the plastic. You don't want to do it much because you want it to do its choke mechanism there, but you just want to keep a little bit of a gap to help keep it from freezing into place because when it gets down to the zeros, it tends to want to stick. And I ain't saying they're all like that, but it was something the factory told me years back and just always do it. Let's go ahead and see what this thing does in manual mode. We uh, checked and verified that we have utility voltage in here, corrected the clock, got that set right, changed her exercise time to in the evening when she's home uh, to actually notice that it's running. This uh, does have lights out here on the side, so I'm going to have to let her know about those. We should have the servo here go back and forth. We should see the choke open and close, and hopefully it starts. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I like playing games with it by, you know, messing with the air intake there to see if it uh, counters it, that it's paying attention to the uh, frequency that it's trying to maintain, which should be holding right at 60, I believe, with this model. This is a Honeywell slash, might as well as call it a Generac, because Honeywell don't really make it. What I also want to do, because I say it all the time, the number one killer of a generator is the battery. It's a maintenance free, which means you can't maintain it. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here without shorting it out. This was a really crap design they came out with. As you can see, it doesn't fit in there right. So you gotta kinda lift it up, twist it sideways, talk to it dirty, and see if you can get it out of there. You gotta be careful when you're leaning it back that you don't short it out into the freaking regulator back here. We got it out. You can see we're starting to swell out here on the side. Unfortunately, the guys didn't uh, pop out the date here, so no real good way other than to look for letters and stuff like that on the edges of the battery to see if we can get a date out of this thing. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing those right now. There's F2, I don't mean a squat. We can do a load test on it. We can do a hardcore test, which they don't recommend, or we can do my electronic one, which I'll probably do here in a second. We can see here that the voltage is definitely up there. This is a, a crappy little tester. About the only thing it's good for is the 100 amp draw load it puts on it. You can see that it's definitely above 12 and a half volts area, so it's definitely charging. We're gonna put the load on it, we're gonna watch and see if that needle goes down slow or does it drop really fast. And does it get down below 11.2 area, which sometimes you're better off to use your digital meter than this meter here, but let's try that. It's going down really slow, had a little bit of a drop there for a minute. Seems to be holding pretty good, but just had a drop. Okay, and you don't want to do that more than 10 seconds. It held pretty good, and you can see that it's slowly coming back up. Generally, if the battery's weak, it's going to dive all the way down and then rock it right back up because the charger's holding it in there. So the battery's probably not too bad. It doesn't tell you a true state, which is why you want to use your electronic. Nice thing about that was is we didn't have to unhook it from the charger to do it. Now the electronic one, I always isolate the battery from it. Now we did just put a little bit of a load on it, so you know it's whether or not that skews the numbers. We'll see here in a minute. I think what we're gonna find out is it was probably low on oil. I went through the history. 
and it said under voltage. Well, we were down to anywhere from zero to five degrees out. This does not have a cold weather st uh, start kit on it, which the start kits usually have a battery warmer plate that goes underneath the battery, that square spot, and then a oil warmer here that goes around the oil filter. And that helps keep the oil nice and warm, at least in the oil filter section. So once it starts to crank, it pulls that hot oil into the engine, which then will mix around and then get to get it cranking over a little easier because wintertime obviously it has a hard time starting by being warm like that it keeps the battery from going dead real quick because you know how things go dead in the winter when the battery's cold it just goes right down we went through the history like i was saying if you go into history go into alarm log you got a million and ten inspect batteries and air filters and all that crap because nobody's been doing the service but you can see on the 17th it had an under voltage at two o'clock area and that makes me think and since it's at 25 seconds it makes me think that that was probably when it was exercising like i said i changed the uh, exercise time and date so i don't know what it is now but that was the only real thing i've seen in there that was uh, of an actual failure otherwise it seems to be doing pretty good going to run log and it looks like it's been running pretty decent manual which i just did exercise auto utility loss See, that was on the third. It started and ran then. Lost it uh, 1329 and stopped 1329. So only ran for what eight seconds, 10 seconds. So that was kind of a somebody either testing it or something. A lot of exercises and stuff like that. There was a utility loss there on the 21st of uh, last year, January. Looks like it's been doing fairly decent. We've already went through the edit menu. This is one of the older controllers, which was pretty easy to navigate, didn't need no special codes, any of that stuff, which made it kind of nice. Now, this radio signal thing here, there used to be a button to push, I think, on this one to lock in. I tried telling it to change channel, that didn't work. It was nice, one of the nicer ones, because you can test with it, but I, I really don't, I don't know. These have been so problematic. So we're gonna see if we can get that reset there. Like I said, there used to be a push button on the back side of this black transmitter. The newer ones have it built in there. But you can see this one has a little box right there. You know, it's been about seven years or better since I've done a crap load of these. So you tend to forget. So if you're not gonna do these every day, don't waste your money or time trying to do warranty and all that stuff. It's a waste, especially with the way they got their school now being done every year. And you're gonna spend, I think $800 to go to their class, which they're gonna do online. And you're you're gonna have a hell of a time learning it if you've never done them before. I highly don't recommend it. It's There's too many people in the Generac market now that installing them, nobody wants to service them. So I'm gonna use some silicone because I don't have any uh, tune-up kits with me. Went ahead and just silicone that shut so that the dirt doesn't come through the hole there and bypass the filter. It'll be good enough till summertime when we can do the maintenance on it because the oil looks like it's fairly clean. We went ahead and got the negative terminal taken off there. This thing is, looks like 540 at zero degrees cold cranking. So this is a cheap one, but it works. Go to standard battery, accurate test, cold cranking, 540, hit enter. Testing, uh, suggested replace. Ooh, not good, huh? Not good, even though we got the voltage there your internal resistance is getting a lot higher. Your cold cranking tested in at 356. So if the battery is weak, it's not gonna spin over as quickly and it's less likely to fire off. I told you that battery was looking a little shady now, you know, under the load. This is where things get uh, deceiving. Shows that, you know, it's cranking over, the voltage didn't drop too horribly bad. It's not doing so great. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that verifier working. I did not see any buttons let's look at this again yeah no button there but i think if i remember right i usually just unplugged it from this controller up front uh, there it is right here on the front this one right here that's your plug for your verifier let's see if we can get that back in there you can kind of see i turned off the controller here on the side and searching for generators. So let's see if this happens to get it. So we've already pulled the power on the transmitter on the back of the generator and had it restart. It'd be nice if it hurry up and find it here. Finally got it to link back together. So we hooked up the ground 
to the battery. I unplugged it, waited a full 10 seconds, like you usually would with anything else. Flipped them both back on. So this was powered down. That was unplugged. Next thing you know, it found it. And everything's ready to go. I'm going to change the channel though, because they were on channel three, I think. And it was wacky. Change channel. It was on three. Let's take it. Let's go to six. Why not? Sending things. Success. Okay. Go to radio. Let's go to radio information. See how it shows anything. Quality 100%. I would surely hope so, since we're a foot and a half away. Let's go to date and time. That's not it's linking very good, is it? Let's see if we can do the test. I ain't too impressed with that. Let's just go ahead and set it because I don't want it to reprogram it. For giggles, I went ahead and turned the stupid thing off. Back on again, and it didn't find it. I have a feeling this thing's going bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and let it do it one more time. But I don't have a whole lot of faith in this. It's uh, the reason why a lot of times they don't even sell these anymore. You've got lights out here. You can look through a window and see what's going on. It's just a luxury. Okay, link fault again. As you can see here, the date got screwed up. It's not the year 2000. Things wouldn't be destroyed yet. Let's go ahead and undo this again. Uh, this is just, do not sell these. These things are garbage. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that back on. Let's go ahead and plug this thing back in again. These things have been more of a headache in my hind end than anything else. Okay, it found it. So all you got to do, homeowner that's probably watching this, is come out here and unplug that thing and turn that thing off and it finds it. Real convenient. And let me guess, batteries, nope, they kind of still hanging in there. Let's see if we can get this clock reprogrammed and test this thing remotely. As you can tell, I'm not, I'm not into this anymore. Uh, I just reset the clock again and it still didn't take. It's probably defective. Start and transfer, let's hit enter. You gotta hit both buttons up and down at the same time. Okay, it started there. Box just clicked, transferred over. Good. Now I see if we can go into status. Currently running. That's a you know, it's not real glamorous test. It's not showing squat. About all you can do far as checking out the what's going on with it, is go to the graph. RPM. So as long as you can zoom in there with your eyeball, you can kind of see that it's running probably 33 RPM. This is just a really crappy display. It don't show you squat. So you can go to voltage once again. You know, it'd be nice if they would show you the true voltage, but they're showing you a graph. See how it's really hard to read. Instead of a nice digital readout, they just don't have that. They came out, I think they've came out with better ones since then, but it's just not much to brag about. So let's go ahead and don't stop the generator. Just sit there and start cooling down and transfer back. down like it should. If that's the case and everything's running like it should, the only thing I see is we need to replace that battery, which I don't have one with me. You see the gas line wasn't done correctly. You're not supposed to have curvature, curvatures like that in it. Half inch gas line. All right, so it goes over to LP regulator. It's on its own regulator, so it's it can handle that. It's gonna be close. Probably should have been three quarter. Yeah. So we missed it. So it ran like it's supposed to. That's a good thing. Now these batteries are still going. 
let's go ahead and see if we can get this clock set right. So the conclusion I've came to here is the clock, if you try to set it with this, it screws that one up. If you set it correctly with that one inside the generator, it seems to be fine, but it doesn't correct it on here. No matter what I do here, it's losing it. It's not keeping it correct. As soon as this loses power, it seems like it loses connection. I'm gonna just tell her it's pretty much about shot. Uh, and she needs a new battery. Uh, everything transferred over, voltages and stuff are fine. We're not going deep, deep into it. What I'm gonna recommend is we come back and do the oil change and all that on it and replace the battery at the uh, same time. And then uh, we can get her serviced then. But for right now, it's running, it's starting. The battery's good enough, but not where it should be at. It's kind of like bald tires. They'll get you to the store, but you know, eventually they're gonna blow and you're gonna wreck. It's kind of the same thing here. It may not start and run. All right, so she wanted us to look at the geothermal also. So we're checking the outgoing water temperature, not 36.1. And our incoming here is only 36.3. Well, it's 36.1 and 36.3 so we have zero drop across this thing what you're doing is this is your technically your condenser so it's going to go in one temperature is going to come out colder because you're extracting the heat out of the water right so that's what we've got going on well you fill your your liquid line it's not hot you fill your uh, suction line which is your hot gas line it's not hot we know that it's had an issue of leaking. You know, it's probably the evaporator up there. This is a geothermal split system, basically a water source heat pump. And they weren't able to find the uh, leak the last time, but this is the end coil. And it is a 16, so I don't know if it's gone to aluminum there or not. But that filter dryer right there is really cold. Uh, feels the same on both sides so I don't think it's restriction on the dryer it's just it's uh, low on charge let's go ahead and grab the gauges and check the pressures real quick but chances are we're gonna need to add some to it and then look for a leak and good we're running the same suction pressure as we are dis discharge pressure that's very unusual and makes me wonder do we have a reversing valve issue Let's jump out R20 and see if this thing will reverse into cooling mode and change its position. So I'm going to R, hopefully not shorting out on something. Uh-oh. That's nice, it's shut down. That's what I love about thermostats. not changing on any of the settings there either. It switched over to the gas furnace. I heard a click. It should have changed the reversing valve. Wouldn't surprise me if that's possibly taking a dump. Also wouldn't surprise me if that uh, capacitor is going bad also. It's probably original one. That's a 2012 so you know we're 10 years old. Let's um, see what we can find here. Go back upstairs, put it on the heat again. It just kicked on, and this is concerning. Our head pressure and stuff is kind of more normal. It was not running like that earlier. I did not check my terminals, but you would figure it should have been. Yeah, now it's warm. That ain't good. Not good at all. And we're hot enough that I don't want to hold on to that. Did we have a problem with the reversing valve? Who knows? Let's see if we can make this thing switch back and forth. Something's wacko. Let's watch this for a minute, see if the pressure's go sky high. Maybe, maybe it's overcharged or something. We did check our temperatures. Now, like I said, our incoming is 36. Outgoing now, at before. Not too extreme out of the way there. I did just verify we have power on Y1 and Y2, so it is running in second stage. Things are looking pretty normal there. Only a four degree drop there though. It seems like it might be a little bit off. I 
have to look and see if we can find the charts here somewhere. Let's try this again, see if the thermostat kicks it out. I'm not real sure what it's going to do. It might uh, feed it. It might just unhook. Let's do that. That way it doesn't do anything stupid. Let's unhook the O terminal. And that way it doesn't back feed to the thermostat. So let's unhook that and we'll hook that then straight to Y. So we got the O terminal hooked there. Let's go to E. It's going into cooling mode now. Let's see if by chance it might have been in cooling mode when it was acting stupid. Now it's nice and cold like it was earlier. It should not have been going into any type of defrost. I don't know why they have W hooked up. It's not necessary on a geothermal. So we're going to unhook that. We don't run defrost because there's no defrost. But even so, the pressures are kind of coming close together. So look at your rejection there into the water. So it doesn't doesn't seem like it was just running in cooling mode. Let's undo that now. Going back the other direction. And they're starting to build the head back up again. Oh, this is going to be one of those little fluky things. Um, even if a TXV was acting up, which I've had a lot of TXVs fail, this 2013-2012 area, I believe that was when we had our little run in with Copeland compressors having anti-rust property thing added to the refrigerant which screwed up all the TXVs and uh, don't know what year that was exactly originally happened but somewhere in this ballpark. Liquid is warm, hot gas is hotter than I really probably care to leave on there as soon as it runs a little longer. So when in doubt check your subcooling and superheat. And we are running about 4.9, so we're a little low. Superheat's kind of hanging in there where it should probably be at. So let's zero this out. Let's take it up to maybe about an 8 to 10 degree subcooling. Not, uh, don't have the charts in front of me. That's why it's always a bad idea to put charts and books for these things in your little rooms where you don't lose a map because that's not where the service guy needs a map. So let's go ahead and add a little something to this and see if we can get that a little more in line with uh, what you're used to, which will make a pretty good difference. There's your water out. It's at 29.3-ish. Four ounces. Let's see where that puts us at. Nothing major already making a difference on our heat rejection that's coming down which is a good thing we're not going full bore here you know doing the full explanation how these things work I have other videos that you can check out where I've kind of done that it's kind of more of just follow along and see what I'm doing for the day well I only had six ounces or 10 degrees subcooling 10 degrees superheat pretty much in line our heat rejection there, we're at 29 degrees. I think we said we had 30 something coming in. Let's recheck that real quick. So about 36. So we got a six degree drop. I think that's right in the chart area. Going out of memory here. See what kind of uh, temperature rise we got across the coil. Got a bypass humidifier here. So let's shut that so we don't get a lot of false readings. Actually, what we'll do, we can actually take a return air reading right in here, which wouldn't hurt nothing. So we can just take a quick reading in here, then we'll take a reading out of the discharge out of the side of the humidifier there. Okay, let's see where we're at. I did up here so it's a little more accurate to the air temperature that's coming from up above. Which I'm going to say is around 70. Let's see what our discharge here is. So 
but it's doing fairly decent. It'll probably do about 24 to 26 area. Water temperature coming in at about 30, just like a regular air cooled or air, uh, air source heat pump where, you know, 30 degree weather, you're doing pretty good usually. So that's about 23, 24 degrees. That's assuming that it's only 70. I'd really like to know what caused the problem that we just had a minute ago. That's kind of concerning. Uh, this thermostat's going to be kicking out here for a long. After so many minutes, it tends to upstage to the gas furnace. Switching back over to cooling mode to see if the reversing valve's acting up. I thought maybe it was sticking on a partial position, which would make sense because the pressures were pretty much equal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check that capacitor too. So it reversed. Pressures are dropping. Let's unreverse. Let's go ahead and put this thing back the way it was so we don't forget. The capacitor was weak, came in at about 37. Uh, it's rated for 40, so I've got a new one on there. Um, I'm trying to think of any good reason what would have happened, what would have caused what happened. And I mean, it, it just seems like the reversing valve was probably in the middle position. I mean, the compressor was what appeared like it was pumping. It seemed like it was pumping. Maybe it wasn't pumping. Maybe that was the problem. But it sounded like it was humming along. I'll play back the video to see, but that don't make no sense. I haven't had to replace any reversing valves on this model yet which is surprising, uh, but I don't know, I told the lady she needs to just uh, keep an eye on it. If she starts getting a lot of cold air, then something's going on. We're going to have to come back and hopefully it'll malfunction to the point where we can catch it doing whatever it's doing.